Good morning, August 20th, 2024. Today is Tuesday, 8.03 a.m. I'm gonna smash through this feedback report here today. Um, I've got a new way that I track the uh, pipeline data. Well, not track it, but report, I guess. So now I don't have to go into each account individually and get the numbers. I can see it all up here on the screen and send it over. Uh, I still do it manually just because um, there, there's some automation in there that I need to keep it, keep an eye on. I um, take very seriously this ACQ score. So if it is reporting improperly, I, I take care of it as soon as I figure that out. Um, if this is the metric that we're going to use to govern the whole program, it's got to be it's got to be airtight. It's got to be reliable. So I have this manual entry still here, but I don't have to go through each and every account. So custom aids, we are at 277, 101, and 75. So staying the same outside of opportunities. Dayton, 281, or sorry, 289, 131, and 35. So one more there. Las Vegas, 267, 107. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. 107.32. 13 points away from Dayton again. These two are battling. Um, I don't know if y'all actually see this, uh, but you two have been trading places for the past. I put a post out in the RCF group the first day that it happened, but you guys have been going back and forth um, for second and third place here so far. Uh, Orlando, 193, 48, 14. That stays the same. LAX, 104, 48, and 6. Oh, that says 149. You lose one there. We're going to drop one. I don't know if that is one that you took out of estimate delivered stage, but if it is um, and you've still delivered an estimate, please make sure they get back in there. Uh, if you're calling on them, I guess... That's fine that they go through your call attempt stages, but you're not going to get credit on that because we can't count that as um, an estimate being delivered. So I saw that it was 49 on there. It's 48 today. Maybe tomorrow it'll, we'll, we'll see that go back up uh, there. Indianapolis, 151, 46 and eight. Oh, wow, that's really good. Chicago is at 173, 18, and 7. Seattle, 131, 39. There we go. We'd love to see that in 7. Grand Rapids, 126, 52, and 7. That stays the same there, and we are good. I don't think I saw anything that needed rearranged, but I'm still going to do it. All right. Grab our averages, and then I'll be done with this one. We will move on to the feedback portion. Actually, the bottom three ACQ is what I have next. So, one, two, three, six straight days of ACQ improvements. Um, I had something uh, with the streaks here. It's a little wonky, so I've just got to redo it. I'm still working on that. I want to bring that back so that you have something to look at every day and just see where you're going. We have the scorecard here. Um, I don't know how often you actually check your scores or if you wait till the state of the RCF every week, um, but I'm going to have something that goes out once a day, every morning, just so you see where you're at. Um, if you go negative around your ACQ evaluation data around the end of the quarter, there are some things that could change with your, your membership. And I can't have a situation where someone goes negative and we reach out, we say you're at risk and they say, wait a minute, like what's going on? Well, it's because your ACQ is negative. So we adjust your program standing based on that. I cannot have it where you, you, you're basically blindsided because it takes a very long time for someone to go from good to at risk. So if that move happens, something has been going not so great for a while now. And um, 
basically means that you haven't been paying attention to see that your ACQ score was negative and um, changes haven't been made to, to correct it. So the streaks feature is really so that each member knows exactly where they are in terms of ACQ. ACQ is the main governing metric. If you keep this positive, you're good. We're going to continue to send you leads. If it's here, you know, below 500, 50, 60, 70, 100, 200, yes, your ACQ score is positive, but it is not strong enough for us to just keep pounding leads. It's enough for you to stay here in the program and you're going to get a lead every now and again. It's just not enough for us to pound your market area and fill that CRM to fill Nurturely Plus with leads until we see more of that progress going. So that's why Dayton and Las Vegas have over 200 leads. Orlando, you're right around there. Um, Chicago and Seattle, actually, you have fewer leads than this because a lot of these counted from uh, Project Rescue. Um, so that's okay. That's all right there. You, you haven't been in the program the 90 days to have that full pipeline. Um, but if you are unsatisfied with lead volume, it's directly tied to your ACQ. Like we, we can't spend more money to buy more leads if the ACQ score is, is not high enough. Because if the ACQ score is not high enough, it means we haven't collected finder's fees. If we haven't collected finder's fees, it means you aren't winning. And if you aren't winning clients, we cannot send you leads. So it's all based on this ACQ here. And you'll be getting those... I don't know when it's going to actually come out. I, got, I am a total idiot when it comes to setting setting up automations that work in harmony, like big systems. I can set off the set up the one off uh, Zapier automations and and whatnot in Nurturely Plus, but to keep track of an entire database and and track all of this, it's a little more challenging for me. So it takes a bit. Um, but those are coming soon. Just to Keep everyone in the know on the ACQ, where they are, how they're progressing, how they can get better. Uh, bottom three ACQ report this week. Um, notes are entered by Chris. I do the CRM audit. Well, I, I enter it in there. Chris is also audit, auditing CRM. Um, so the notes here are from your sales mentor. And so I will send the link out uh, through the RCF group. So, and I will also mention you or tag you so that you know that you're included in the report. You can go in and check out your notes. Um, Granada's was the same as last week. We haven't heard anything back. They're on probation right now. ACQ evaluation date is coming up September 13th. I don't have confidence in that membership anymore. So I do think Granada is going to be um, expelled. <clears throat> so these notes are, are quite the same. But if you're on the bottom three, they're going to be included in the report anyway. Uh, Tiffany, Grand Rapids, there are no changes with yours. He, Chris mentioned the only thing that he would add um, in addition to last week is that when you deliver an estimate, fill out your lead values because that means you got a price to them. And we, we'd we like to know the monthly value. So the lead value in your opportunity represents the monthly value. So if it's a, a monthly client that pays you $200, it's $200. If it's bi-weekly that pays you $200, that number would be $400. If they pay you $200 every week, your opportunities lead value would then be $800. So it's the, it's the estimated monthly value of that client. So when you're on this report, there's going to be golden nuggets of feedback listed in here that you should that you should review and take action on. If you have something that you disagree with, if you have something that you have questions on or concerns, this is the time to let us know. You can drop the comment there in the RCF uh, that I will post on this report. You can DM myself or Chris, you can email us, let us know. Um, Edwin, I know that you had replied to this one, so I'm going to pop over in here. I don't actually know what you you said fully. I know I got the notification. So you said still wary of using tasks excessively for now. I've shortened the stale period in the pipeline stages from three days to do it to two days and six days to four days respectively. I do like that. 
I also like the 15 to 20 days after given estimate to mark them ghosted will be a oh, brother. Excellent. Um, I, I really like that of, of Chris as well. Uh, three weeks is, is a while. Um, they're either going to know, yes, we want to sign up with you. No, we're not going to, or not right now. Either one of those are answers. Yes, they're going to be on your schedule. No, you're going to say, all right, that's all right. We'll, t we'll try again in six months. You mark it lost and Project Rescue handles it from there. If it's not right now, they're going to be, they can stay in the estimate delivered stage and you set a task to follow up with them at the date that they say. If they say not right now, they have to give you a date for when you can follow up. Not when they're necessarily going to be ready for sure, but when they are okay, are okay with you following up. That's good. Go from there, we get our answer. Um, I do like the 15, 20 days. Also mark them as ghosted. This is critical because you are missing out. If you do not do this, if you call five times unsuccessfully and do not apply ghosted, you're missing out on an email and a text message outreach that could go out and save that opportunity. So you have another chance, kind of a Hail Mary attempt if you apply ghosted and do this when they are in call attempt five. Do not do this in any other stage, please. You have to have called them five times and they have to be in that call attempt, call attempt number five stage. When you apply ghosted, it's going to mark it lost for you. It says, all right, we lost this, we're gonna move on, but we're gonna try one more time. If they reach back out and they say, yes, you know, actually we're still interested, reopen that opportunity and continue on like normal. Um, so the notes in here from Chris are gonna be terrific. Um, if nothing has changed, we're going to put the same notes in there as last time. Um, Tiffany's, Grand Rapids was a little shorter here because there were no changes. But if I go back to last week on the 12th, I will see what we had for Grand Rapids here. Chris is, let, he's letting you know that your note taking, the thoroughness and the detail, the attention to detail in them are terrific. It's clear that you know how to manage a CRM up to a point, and now we're going to use it fully. Uh, Chris suggests following up quicker, faster than a week after sending out the estimate, unless they tell you otherwise, of course. He, he makes it clear. He knows everyone is different in their operations. I'm different than Chris. Custom Aids is different than Gem City. Gem City is going to be different than nat natural cleaners. It's just how it is. But if we give you this framework, you can take that framework and, and mold it into your, your operations. So he's saying here, you know, if you deliver an estimate, just try to follow up quicker than a week. If they're still ghosting you and they're still saying, no, not right now, we move on. We will try again in a few months. Our time should be spent on the folks who are ready to go now. Um, let's see. What else did he say here? Finding glass for a window across it. Even if the answer is a no, get a no from that client as soon as possible so you aren't wasting any work. Well, that's pretty much exactly exactly what I said here as well. Um, getting the answer from them, it's yes, no, or not right now. That not right now, you set the follow-up, hit them up again then. If they don't give you a date, you can say, you know what, all right, I'll follow up with you in six months. Mark it as lost. Do not apply ghosted if you say that though, because it's going to send the text out and say, hey, you know, so-and-so, are you still interested in a cleaning when they just told you to follow up in six months? So if that happens, just mark it lost. Project Rescue will automatically go out in six months. But if you, but don't apply ghosted if they, if they say that to you, if they verbalize it. Um, CRM audits. I know the image isn't the best. So no one passed it this time. Um, I can tell uh, Edwin's, yours was due to unprocessed leads. So this just means usually, I, well, I know this because, because I know you and how you're handling your CRM. Chris audited your CRM before the West Coast started their business day. So overnight, 
portions from the day before. There were four unprocessed leads in here, which hurt the CRM audit. Do not worry. This does not affect your ACQ score, not yet anyway. This is just to let you know the areas we are watching, because if you are taking care of these areas, you're going to win. It's just how it is. If you keep a clean CRM and you keep your, your opportunities moving through them and you're following up over and over and over again, eventually you're gonna have hundreds of people that you're doing this for, maybe even thousands. The numbers are just in your favor. So we have to keep this clean now because if we're not keeping it clean now when it doesn't really matter or when there's few opportunities in here what in the world is it going to look like when there are hundreds we're not going to put hundreds of leads in your account if you can't even take care of 10. so edwin i see a failed crm audit here but i do know that this was audited before you had a chance to come in these four opportunities are the reason Four unprocessed opportunities are the reason this audit failed. Otherwise, you'd be fine. Don't worry about this one at all. I know, I know that you're okay there. And I know this because I have a front row seat to each and every one of your, your pipelines. I see how you handle this stuff. Um, Tiffany, yours failed uh, due to, well, it could be a number of things because the pipeline is so small right now. Um, most certainly, the overdue tasks of 56, um, they have to be cleared out. And I don't know if they are like notification tasks or whatnot, but this looks like a lot of follow-ups have been missed, but maybe they weren't missed. Maybe you did them. I know you use the other phone system, um, but we've got to update Nurturely Plus. Um, if your ACQ score is not sufficient, you're failing your CRM audit, but you're using another phone system. Like you were, you're okay to use the other phone system, but if you're struggling and you're not using our phone system, we cannot really help you. We cannot see the conversations. We can't see what you're saying back and forth. We can't offer advice. So that's your choice to go to, to use your other phone system. I'm not trying to, I know it's, it can be cumbersome to have a bunch of different platforms. Um, we're not trying to add all these different things uh, to your business. At the end of the day, we're trying to help you grow. But if we can't see your conversations, it's it's quite, it's difficult to, to offer advice there. So then when we look at the CRM audit, I see that you have a ton of overdue tasks. There are no lead values. Um, once you deliver an estimate, you should pretty well know what kind of service they want because they want a recurring or a one-time. Tags have to be on your opportunities before you mark them one. Uh, so we know the frequency. If someone comes in and requests a recurring cleaning, but you list them as a one-time clean and there are zero notes in there explaining why they went from recurring to one-time, we are still going to bill you the finder's fee. Notes are absolutely critical. They are imperative on every single one. Now, you as the business owner, I know that's tedious, but you're going to hire a VA someday and you absolutely must have them operate in this manner. It has to be done. Otherwise, otherwise we're just not going to close as many. This is what sales is. This is what lead generation is. And this is why most people say that marketing sucks. They say that lead generation sucks. It's because their back end isn't set up to handle it. So the mentality of treating every lead the same is going to put you on top. You're going to send them through your processes, your business's processes and operations. You're going to take a stranger. You're going to contact them. You're going to deliver the estimate. You're going to put them on the schedule and you're going to collect that invoice. Then you're going to come back in here and nurturely plus market one and get your, get your ACQ points. This process works. I'm starting to see it. We only have two negative ACQ scores in here right now. And one of them is one that I'm not even following up with until September 1st to get them launched. Granada is probably on their way out. So that means every other active member in here has a positive ACQ score. And I don't think that has happened. Um, not at this level. We've always had someone who was um, 
kind of using the platform, but was negative. Um, here we have some folks that are, they're using the platform better, not, not to the best of their abilities or cap capabilities, but our scores are much better. And now I know that we can improve from there. Uh, I don't believe that this is the ceiling for well, LAX, Indy, Chicago, Seattle, and Grand Rapids. I don't believe that this is where you're going to stay. I, th I think you're going to be up in the 1K club. Um, I know it can happen. It's not going to happen overnight. It, it, it will take more opportunities to put them through here, but we need to st start seeing better conversion rates. Orlando, Vegas, and Dayton between 7 and 12%. Down here, we're at 4 and 5. We need to be better at the closing rates. And so I move over to the ratios to see at which point in the pipeline our hangups are. Orlando, getting an estimate delivered is tough. Chicago, Indy, and Seattle. We're having a, a tougher time getting these estimates delivered. And then LAX, Indy, Seattle, and Grand Rapids are having a tougher time closing. Um, I did mention this before. Now I go back and say Chicago and Seattle, you guys do have a bunch of project rescue leads and those typically, they're not going to convert the same way because they are, they're basically cold leads. Um, but they do convert is just at a lower clip. So it, it can, I, I forgive me for getting ahead of myself here. If I were to, I feel like there was 65, six, 70, 65 project rescue leads. Let's say, let's say there's only 70 here. So the ACQ score would be 77, but now our ratios are a bit different. 56% of your leads are getting estimates delivered to them. That's beautiful. The, the converting, converting them into clients is a bit of a struggle, but I uh, take no worry in that because you're 53 days in, you're not 90 days in. LAX, Chicago, Granada. Well, I don't really, Granada. I mean, we do have patience and leniency, but these numbers haven't moved in weeks. I think it's been middle of July since we've had a completed uh, weekly check-in from Granada. So it's tough to really speak on, on this one here as far as uh, pipeline data. Um, Rogan, I know you had shared, oh, Oliver, I got your, your feedback report in here too. Uh, with the exception of Granada, everyone else, this was the quickest. We've got them all in. Um, I didn't expect, actually don't even think Granada being on probation gets the weekly notification. Um, anyway, Rogan, you said, uh, your challenge is trying to get a response from leads and I hear you. I know that most leads are are, are going to ignore us. Most. Dayton and Las Vegas are closing 12%. That means 88% of the time they lose. And so what I want to point out here, Rogan, is that in terms of delivering opportunities to estimates, so column A, J here, you are second place out of all the members behind Granada, who, like I just said, really, it shouldn't count. It's hard to speak on that pipeline data. So really you should be number one. You are the best at delivering estimates to new leads. You're delivering estimates to 46% of your leads. And while you're only closing 13% of them, I do think that day is coming. You did say from the nine estimates that are delivered, Five of them said they are still interested, but when I ask them when we can schedule, I hear nothing from them again. And when I ask them again, if they are still interested, they say yes. And then right after they respond, I ask again when they can schedule, and I also send them in the same text message our availability, then again, no response. Rogan, I thoroughly appreciate this, this explanation. And it, again, I can, I know you're putting in serious effort. I know you are. And so what I wanted to point out here, you're delivering for estimates to 46% of your leads. Five of the nine 
are still interested. Let's say you got three of those five. This six goes to nine and you launch. Let's say you won five of them. You're up to 588. It has a dramatic impact. So I also think, so you, if you also said for now, you're going to keep them in your pipeline uh, because they did not say no. I agree with you on that. Um, you're getting poor responses here. You did say the three in service scheduled are not scheduled yet. When we had them scheduled, they canceled, but they're still interested. You're letting me know that they're telling you they're still interested. They're not saying no, like saying absolutely not. I am okay with keeping these in the pipeline. What I would recommend is getting a date that you can follow up with them at. So these five, um, they're interested. They don't know when to schedule. Be like, okay, I, I totally get it. Life is wild. When can I follow up with you? That way you're taking away the uncertainty and you know, a couple of weeks, you're going to follow up with them and you're probably going to win them. If this is all you do, eventually you say you have five of the nine estimates in here. Eventually that number is going to be 15 of the 29. Then it's going to be 35 of the 59. These numbers will grow and eventually you're going to be winning two clients a day. It just takes time. And truthfully, it takes longer than 90 days. That's why I mentioned the controlled ramp period of the five to six months. Um, Chris and Reagan were not, their ACQ scores were not that high in their first few months. It took a little bit. Oliver was a little bit different. I remember him getting up to four and 500 ACQ within his first two weeks. Um, then there was a little bit of a, a, uh, dead period. It just wasn't marking any opportunities one, or I think it was your VA that wasn't doing it. Then there was one day you came in and let me see if I can find it. You mark, we, we marked a ton of them one and you rocketed up. And since then, so right here, it went from, okay, so I lied a couple of weeks, yeah, four or 500, you kept rising, you kept going up and up, delivering your estimates. And then there was a bit of a slowdown here, Oliver, and it was just that wins weren't being registered. So if that happens, your ACQ slowly dips. But then we added a ton and you gained a thousand ACQ points. And since then, you've been quite steady. There was a bit of a drop here and this was um, due to the reporting error. So if you guys were delivering estimates, they came in, you delivered an estimate and they sat there for a long time and let's say more than 90 days and they fell off. So you got your ACQ points on the front end for delivering the estimate. Then they fell off after the 90 days, but then you came in and then updated that opportunity. Then you said, all right, well, actually we're going to mark them lost. They are not interested. Well, it then also went and counted the estimate delivery again, because it counted when it was in there and then when it was updated. So it was giving double estimates delivered to everyone when it shouldn't have been. So if you saw your ACQ sharply decline overnight, that's what it was. There were way too many estimates in there. Dayton was at like 180. I know that Dayton is not delivering two estimates every single day over like religiously. It's just not happening. That's, that's what that was saying for the past three months, they were delivering at least two estimates every single day, regardless of business days. Um, the 131 is is similar. It is similar. Sorry, is is accurate. This makes way more sense. 180 does not. So if you saw your score drop, no one reached out to me. So I about their score sharply dropping. Reagan, you let me know that you're 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 focused on your score, but we've already we've already discussed that. Um, we know what's going on. Um, so it's that was not the case there. Um, I know you're gaining your momentum again, and we're putting, we, we're launching the PPC campaigns, the Google ads, Microsoft ads, and getting you some more leads in there. We're just loving what we're seeing as far as your CRM hygiene and of course, um, ability to close. Um, I like, look, I haven't updated yours on here in a little bit. Actually, it's been July 4th. You're staying out of the bottom three ACQ. And I only update this once a quarter, um, on the evaluations. One day it'll be automated today. It isn't. Uh, so I do apologize about that. Um, Oliver, let me make sure here, you know, Rogan, actually, I'm sorry. I, I skipped over the first part of yours because I knew you were talking about your five, uh, estimates being delivered. 
um, and their interests. Uh, bark leads for you are um, a no-go. Um, we have had streaks where we won like four and five bark clients in a row and then times where we haven't won for like three months. Um, we'll still drop some bark leads into your accounts, um, but there's only a couple members that are actually closing those at a high enough rate. Um, that's for us to worry about. Like if we see that we'll make those changes, we'll help, we'll drop some of those leads into your account to supplement the, the volumes. Um, but we're focusing on social media, uh, Google ads, Microsoft ads, and organic. Um, organic is a bit more, it's, it's a lot, uh, definitely a longer game. Uh, it's tougher for our sites to beat out, like rank another cleaning companies or outrank another cleaning company site in that market area, because I'm pretty sure Google can tell that our site is not the legitimate one. So what we're doing is filling out all of these websites with a ton of great content so that each of them has a ton of pages out on the website and we're just playing the numbers game. We will um, soak up all the organic traffic that we possibly can, even though we may not rank literally number one. Um, it's just part of the longer goal. So we have a bunch of different channels where we are funneling leads into um, and we kind of watch each lead source to see how each is performing. Bark is not the best, though we've had a couple of you are, are closing them at quite a, at a proficient enough rate for it to work. Um, the success, Rogan scheduling a move out clean within one hour with a customer. That went so fast, she said. She decided right away after I sent her the estimate and that was the first that was the first and the deal closed pretty quick. I love to hear it. We love to celebrate even the one time cleans uh, to help the ACQ score. You are mentioning in here that um, all the leads that you won were one time cleans. I know Grand Rapids has an issue with that as well. Um, Truthfully, these are the only two market areas where it seems like we're able to knock out the one-time cleans, but not the recurrings. I'm not exactly sure what it is yet. I don't believe it's pricing. Um, I guess I, I don't. I don't really know. It, LAX definitely has not had enough leads in there for me to tell overall. Grand Rapids kind of has. Um, but it is still quite early. Like I said, inside the controlled ramp period is, is quite tough. 90 days is our first marker. Um, but inside like five months, it's still a small enough or too small of a sample, sample size of data for me to go off of and make real changes on that. So Tiffany, I want you to know, um, and you Rogan now LAX as well, Tiffany, I am watching um, the ratio of recurring clients to one-time cleans. We want you to get these recurring clean, cleanings, these clients, of course, like we get the fee, but we also know that you want the recurrings as well. Um, keep do, keep, keep at it. Um, I'd say keep doing what you're doing. Uh, there are some things that we would change. Uh, definitely the lead value adding in the uh, frequency tags, taking care of the tasks, stuff like that. But keep following up with them as quickly as you are. If I go over here to the TTL reports, I need to get on this main one because that was just too much data. Um, you're number two, Rogan, you're number one. Like this is terrific. Um, so keep at it there. You're gonna be all right. We'll get some more leads in there and you'll get your recurring wins. Um, Oliver, on to you last, absolutely not least. Um, the challenge of this week kind of hurt my heart, but I get it. Um, I, I, I kind of have a hard time with this stuff. He, 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 let me get it. I'm getting ahead of myself. Oliver mentioned here, had to let go of a new cleaner that just doesn't get it. Um, a long time cleaner whose standards have just slipped and just doesn't compare nearly as well as my top providers. Uh, core principles, values, quality, communication, timeliness. Um, Oliver says it's not difficult, but some get it and some don't. We've got to cut the week and move on. I hear you. My heart still hurts 
when that has to happen. And I thank God every single day that it's not me that has to um, deal with that side of the business in custom aids. That is my sister, Katie, and then we've got Jenny and Alicia um, who handle that. So I can't really speak on this side of it. I can help you all get um, applications and interviews, but as far as the firing, really even the hiring side of it, I have no, I really don't have anything to do with. Um, that's a whole nother beast, whole nother side of the business. Um, it's tough. It, it, it can take a toll on you, but I mean, Oliver, your mindset is going to protect you overall. Um, you've got to have your values and your principles for a reason. Otherwise, uh, folks are going to stomp all over you. Um, success for this week. This is incredible. Just hit a hundred Google reviews. I don't even, I don't think custom aids has a hundred Google reviews and <laughs> we should be focusing on that. I don't even have automation to go out and ask for them. We are, um, actually, I'm not gonna lie. I've taken for granted us being in a rural area. We don't have many competitors. So, um, it's easy to, to rank at the top of the search engines, just with a Google business page, you set it up and, and you're good. Um, but we should be cementing our, um, status there. Um, our ranking with that, I've got like two websites that also take up the spaces on the organic rankings on top of the Google business profile. So we're good. Uh, but there's more that we can do to prevent others from taking us out uh, in that area. Um, suggestions for improvement. I need some help setting up automation so that my TTL isn't impacted by leads that come in at strange hours of the night. Perhaps Chris can guide me on that or perhaps yourself. Ah, uh, yes, absolutely. Oliver, uh, your TTLs are not impacted by, or sorry, your ACQ is not impacted by TTL. That only happens if it exceeds 501. Um, at 500 even, nothing happens. So between 250 and 500, you just it, it just stays the same. It's unchanged. Um, it, once you hit 249, though, Oliver, you become eligible for a 5% increase in ACQ. So if you're at like 1730, you go up to 1816 with that increase. If you drop to 501 or greater, it's a 20% decrease. Um, we don't, uh, this is tough to kind of set up the, uh, so that the TTL is impacted. What you've got to do is get the tag to be removed. Um, so if you have a text message, let me go see about Edwin's. What we're doing here in Seattle is, let me see if it's on this one. Lead notifications, TTL. Okay, when the new lead comes in, the TTL tag is being added. That's starting the timer. And then when it is, where is it? Right here. When it's touched, we're removing the tag. A touch is the pipeline stage, stage being moved to service scheduled. That was a list labeled. Service scheduled, call attempt one, estimate scheduled, or needs follow up. If you remove the contact tag, it also does it as well. It's going to look it up there, it's going to stop the timer make sure that stopped. That will decrease your TTL and make sure it's touched. So Oliver, what I would do for you, let me see if I, this is what it should do. So long as there is a lead notification, Is it over here too? Yep, TTL is touched. We want to remove the tag, but also add the, this here 
as a trigger because if you remove it manually, that should count as well. If you oh, I already did it, sorry, it is already up there. Okay, removing the tag is how you're going to stop the timer, stop the TTL. But if you're just managing your pipeline like you should be and you move them to call attempt one, it does it for you. It does it automatically. It will stop the timer, remove the tag. But if you want to manually stop the timer at any moment, you need to remove TTL tag. So let me see if we've got one, for example. We don't have one in here. Let me go to Chicago's and then Okay, there's not one in there. So in Chicago's pipeline, we've got four. These better not have been added more than a couple days ago because that was last night. 16th, 18th. So four days here, your TTL is getting exploded here on this one. So I can see the tag is on all of these. And nope, not there. Oh, even Kim has one. So I see it here. This is not good. Take it off. It's got, if it's still on there beyond that, it means you're moving the pipe, the opportunity to a stage it shouldn't be. For example, that one was in call attempt two. If we go from new, new lead to call attempt two without going to call attempt one, that's an improper flow and will not remove the tag. So for example, let's say these leads came in overnight and the automation took the tag off, but it still has them here in new lead. You have to call them to put it to call attempt one. This is not text or email attempt. So when it comes in, the text message will go out. Well, hold on a second. It's going to be, I gotta duplicate this. So you're not going to text them at 3 a.m. So what's going to happen here is, oops, I need to go to Vegas. So if you're not going to text them at 3 a.m., you're not going to remove the tag then either um, because they're not touched. I need to make that change we want to yep 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 okay hold on a minute call attempt one needs follow up remove tag so what we're going to do on this no it is lead notifications not the touch Okay, so there is no automatic message. <laughs> Let me see. Maybe you have it in another. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. This lady's wild. I'm going to, I'm looking for, oh, you, you customize these up. Oh, okay, okay, let's see. So I know if they call that number, I mean, yeah, I have them in there, but I don't, I don't want to do that. I am going to take, this is what I would do, Oliver. I'm not going to do it right now, but I am hoping that you are watching this and you're going to let me know. Um, Lead comes in, we get notified. We want 
to wait. Start from, let's go 8.30, we're gonna end at set. Yeah, we're gonna, if someone's, if I were to submit my own information and someone texts me back that night, I would be happy. I'm just gonna wait one minute on that. Okay, so lead comes in, notify, notify. We're gonna wait. Then we're going to send an SMS. I actually wanna wait longer than this. I'm gonna wait three minutes. So it seems natural, so that it is not like 17 seconds after they submit it because they know that someone isn't gonna be able to do that. Oopsie. Okay, so we're adding. Mm -hmm. You're in the wrong one. I can't, I have to do it on, we're gonna wait. I would rather wait on this one down here. Let it go through, get the thing started. to, whoopsie, yeah, that's right, 7.30. All right, I'm gonna send an SMS, take the name out, put their first name. A little smiley in there. We just gotta know that you're looking for a home We'll say it like that. To get it started, please. Okay. Actually, I think it sends it out automat automatically. That's perfect. Sa save this one. So now it's waiting. Yo, good thing I did it. Saturday and Sunday to trigger, to fire in between these times. So if it happens outside of these times, it's going to wait until the morning. And that's what it has to be. Um, because we're not touching them until the morning. And if you had a 24 hour sales team, perhaps they would call right away or they would do it. In that case, then you would get the, the immediate TTL. But the truth of the matter here is that we're relying on automation. So you're not touching it right away anyway. It's going out at 8 a.m. Like I said, if you had a 24 hour sales team that was willing to call at 3.30 a.m. when they come in, boom, you're gonna get that one minute TTL. But if they come in overnight, wait until 8 a.m. is when they when that timer will stop because we're not going to stop that timer until it's legitimately touched. Just because we have an automation in here to remove the tag doesn't mean it's touched. This SMS going out, we will count that as a touch, but you still must, still must call them. We did not update the um, pipeline stage, but we did remove the tag. So Oliver, this is on here right now, the automated text. Um, if you see this and you do not want that on there, please reach out, let me know to remove it because if I go in, I'm gonna have to remove it and put it back in if you do it, if you want it in there right now. But as it stands, Every one of your leads is going to get that text message right away. Um, you can change it to whatever you'd like. Let me know. We'll get that figured out. But please do review that and get back with me um, on there. Um, I think that's that's what we've got today. It's a nice long feedback report today. Rogan, Oliver, I love reading this stuff. I love seeing and getting a better glimpse into what's going on in your day-to-day -day outside of just what's happening in your CRM. So putting it into words like this is this is perfect. Um, Rogan, keep following up. Keep getting in touch with your leads as quickly as you are. You are delivering estimates at the, a higher clip than any other member. Have confidence in that and know that the wins are going to come. Oliver, let me know about that automation. If it is garbage, if you want to keep it, if you want to change it, um, 
because the next lead that comes in is going to get that text message. And I don't, I don't want it to mess anything up that uh, you're already doing. I don't think it will, um, but I just wanted to let you know beforehand. So that's it for this feedback report this week. We'll talk to you again next week. Have a good one. Bye-bye.